Now this is a laptop I am surprisingly impressed by. You know, when I heard about the HP NV15 laptop, I didn't realize that you could get it in an RTX 3050 Ti. And I thought that could really be advantageous because normally I see this laptop as something, you know, with a standard i7 1165G7, something thin and light and, you know, just kind of good for graphic design. But this laptop packs a punch for not only video editors, but even a little bit of light 3D modeling. Let's get into it. Now, first and foremost, I'm going to just throw it straight out there that this is last year's 11th gen, okay? And if you don't like that, just honestly, just bail in the video now, drop your nasty comment, and we'll move forward. So keep that in mind. But what we're going to be looking at is the true performance you can get out of this laptop before we even get to 12th gen. And for somebody who's looking to maybe even save some money once 12th gen launches, this could be a laptop for you as well. I would see this as kind of like the premium... HP Omen. Now it doesn't have as much performance in the GPU category because with the HP Omen we can get the RTX 3060 or even 3070. But if somebody's looking for a good, like professional, on the go, nice aluminum build quality with some good performance, this could be a really great option for you. Now I did a full unboxing, so if you're curious about the exact build quality, impressions, and all of that, you can check that out at the end of this video. But what we're going to get into is some of the things that I missed or just simply couldn't cover because I didn't test it yet and talk about those now. First being the webcam, so we'll get a quick sample of that. Hello, hello, hello. I am Where's Waldo, and this is the HP NV camera. A little audio test, a little video quality. It's pretty good. Nah, it's not that great. It's just okay. But it'll do the job for some Zoom calls. Now next, let's take a look at the screen. So for the color gamut range, here are the results coming up on the screen now, and this is where we get some good results. So we not only get a good build quality with the aluminum, but we also get a good quality screen. So that was a big bonus for the screen. Now also, I wanna give you a quick audio experience of the speakers to see how that sounds coming out of the laptop, and here's a quick sample of that. Now, for ports, we do have a good selection of ports. However, we are missing the full-size SD card slot like on the HP Omen. So if I were gonna pick this between the HP Omen for the ports in general, I would lean towards the HP Omen because this has a micro SD card slot instead of the full one. However, we do have two Thunderbolt ports. We have an HDMI, USB type A, and then a power port on that side. And on the other side, we have another USB type A and our headphone jack, and then a small vent here, which actually does pretty, pretty good. Actually, really good cool in this laptop. This laptop is one of the coolest laptops that I've used from HP. So we'll get to those results here in a little bit later in the video. Now, one thing I wanna look at here is a quick screen flex test. And I was actually really impressed with this screen. It's not quite MacBook Pro level with the lack of screen flex, but it's really close. And then with the full hinge down at the bottom, obviously we have no screen flex down at the bottom. Now, one thing I will point out is the Trackpad feels a little small for a, you know, kind of premium, big, somewhat MacBook Pro competitor, in my opinion, as far as the look and feel of this laptop is, but it has great click sensitivity and touch sensitivity. Uh, it is a good fit for the computer. I just uh, fit as in like quality. Uh, I just wish it was a little bit bigger. Now the keyboard is nice. It's quiet. It's got good key press, it's snappy, kind of a short to medium key press, uh, and also the full size shift key, which always makes me very happy. So great work on that HP. Here's a quick sample of me using the keyboard and trackpad. So you can kind of hear that, that sounds. Now this laptop is actually fairly thin and light. Compared to the HP Omen, it is quite a bit thinner. And that's something that I think this is why I would say it's more of a professional on the go friendly version of the HP Omen, which is slightly less performance. And so if you're looking for something like that, this would be a great pick for you. Now the battery life is an area that I thought it was pretty good, but nothing amazing. Now for the battery life results, what I do is I run the computer um, in Passmark for the kind of productivity battery life test. And then I also run it streaming YouTube videos for as long as till the battery go dead. And this is all done at about 35 to 40% screen brightness. Now for the Photoshop battery life, I ran the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on repeat until the battery goes dead. It's a pretty heavy, intense Photoshop routine or workflow. So if you're doing more light Photoshop tasks, you'd probably get a little bit longer battery life. For the video editing battery life, I run Premiere Pro 
playback 4K project on repeat. So loop, it just continues to loop until the battery goes dead. And that's how I get those results. Now, before we get into the performance benchmarks, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of this laptop, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase for that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, kicking things off in Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench single core and multi-core, you can see that we have pretty good results here on the list. It's nothing that is really blowing your socks off when you're first looking at the Cinebench R20 and R23. And that's really a bit of the more 3D modeling. And so it kind of complements things there with kind of the CPU and GPU. But we, as we get into Geekbench single core and multi-core, we're seeing much better performance. It's actually pretty incredible to see that this laptop outperforms many other of the gaming PCs that I've had on my channel. So. Good work on you, HP, with this Envy. Now, moving forward into the uh, you know real-world benchmarks, looking at 3D modeling in Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, PTC Creo, and SolidWorks, because this is an RTX 3050 Ti, it's going to be on the lower end of the charts, just because it's the 4 gig VRAM card, it's not the 6 gigs of VRAM. So like I said earlier in the introduction of the video, Though you'll be able to do some light 3D modeling, I would not pick this if that's gonna be your main workflow. You can see that it doesn't get the best results, but it can definitely keep up with some of the more, you know, budget-friendly laptops. Like I said, this is more of a premium laptop with a budget-friendly GPU and a powerful CPU than it is a budget-friendly build with powerful GPU and powerful CPU. So you're really paying um, for the CPU, the build quality, and then kind of the support of that more budget-friendly GPU. You can upgrade this to like a 3060. So if you're wanting that bump in performance for GPU, make that upgrade and that'll be really, really solid. Once again, inside of After Effects, this is another area I was like, dang, this thing's keeping up like pretty good here. Um, it was right behind the HP Omen with the Ryzen 7 5800H and RTX 3060 GPU. Next, we're jumping into video editing. And once again, I was pretty floored. Uh, the export times were good, pretty standard, nothing crazy there. But what really stood out to me, um, and those will pull up on the screen right now, is the, the playback. The playback uh, impressed me way more than the export times. The export times were pretty standard. This thing dropped around 300 frames for B-RAW, which for most laptops on my channel, um, that's, that's amazing, especially for this RTX 3050 Ti. I think a lot of that had to do with kind of the Intel Quick Sync and the i7-1100H giving us a really good bump in performance. And then even in the red footage, though, um, you know, we weren't seeing insane, like close to zero drop frames, we didn't see the 10 to 12,000 drop frames um, that we've been seeing in the past. I was just like, man, this is, this is impressive. This is a powerful little beast. And so keeping in mind perspective, something that has had zero drop frames is a PC build I recently reviewed that had the i9-12900K and an RTX 3090 desktop GPU. Okay, so that dropped zero frames. So this one is getting, you know, in just a couple of thousands is, is very impressive to me. Now moving on to DaVinci Resolve, we saw good export times out of DaVinci Resolve. Not great, Intel is not as optimized as say Ryzen, but we did see really good smooth playback in DaVinci Resolve. The next thing I like to look at is video editing export time as it relates to the export time, the thermals, and the fan noise. This has really good thermal management because the fan noise was fairly low, the thermals were incredible, uh, especially for a Windows laptop getting such good playback and such good export time, like 63, uh, degrees Celsius, which to me is is really good. If I can get the mid 70s, I'm, I'm pretty happy with a with a Windows PC gaming laptop. But that this had 63 degrees Celsius was phenomenal and a pretty low fan noise. Now let's move on to Photoshop here. And inside of Photoshop, again, we saw great performance. Um, we saw in the low 900s, you're going to have no issues with Photoshop. You're going to have great performance there. Um, and this is using the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. And so with that in mind, you're going to have a great time with multiple layers, you're not going to have a lot of issues, a lot of lagginess, especially if you get this one with 16 gigs of RAM, you're going to be in a good position um, for Photoshop work. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, of course, links are in the description below. Likes of this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.